Hello, it's Debbie with Stitching. Today we're going to be working on Block 7 of the Sweet Pea Santa's Workshop Tour Block of the Wheat Quilt. It looks like it's a little crafting table with paint cans and glue bottle. First thing we'll do is stitch down our batting. There are 56 steps in this, and from what I see, we don't have the thread showing until the tabletop satin edge and my tabletop is going to be blue so I've got blue in my thread. And now we will trim this out. After the trim will be the wall placement. Now we stitch down the wall and then we'll trim. After the wall trimmed down, we're going to do the placement for the tabletop. Now we do the tack down for the tabletop. Now we'll trim that out. Now that we have that trimmed out, we're going to do the little bits of satin edging on the tabletop. As I'm sure you saw, I had cut that, the tabletop fabric so close, it was unreal. So I've got a little bit of a gap, and I'm sure it'll get covered up by the border fabrics. And if it doesn't, I'll, I'll fix it. Now we're going to do the top border sew down. And as you can see, I always say, I, I, I have said in previous videos, don't use your salvage. But in this case, I had not a great deal of this. I know there's more, but I couldn't find it. 
so I'm using the salvage in the seam. <laughs> and I'm to, you know what? I'll flip it around the other way. And I just won't put a whole lot on the other side of the line. You just want to make sure you're covering it like an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Doesn't have to be a great deal. Now it's going to stitch this down and we'll fold it over. I'm trying to decide if this camera is bouncing or not. I had to clamp it to the table, but it's a really heavy duty table. I didn't think it would have any vibration coming through it. My husband made this table from a countertop and it, it is heavy duty, I'll tell you what. But it's really hard to tell if the camera is bouncing or if it's you know, what I'm seeing in the screen, the movement. I hope it's not bouncing for you. Okay, now it's going to do the seam line on the outside. show that to you before we go on with the rest so as you can see it was close but I made it on the other side and I just need enough for seaming so that works they their instructions say a half inch but you've got a stitch line there to know where the seam is supposed to be you can match those up so as long as you're a quarter inch past that you're gonna be okay so I'm going to set this down and it's going to sew just on the other side of that stitch down, that stitch line that's already there. So you do have just a bit extra that it's going to sew. As you can see, watch the foot go down. Now you see where it's falling. So now we're going to do the bottom just like the top. Then it'll do the left side and the right side. If you've watched my previous videos in this series, then you know that that's what it does. It does the top one, bottom, left, right. From this point on, I won't be talking during the borders. We'll just fast forward. Want to show you real quickly. And as you can see, my little boo boo here completely covered up by the border. So that worked. Now we'll do our corner detail, and I'm going to do it in gold.
After our corner details, we're going to be doing the sign placement up here that has the, it's like a calendar, okay, has December 25th in it. So we'll do the placement, then the tack down the trim, and then it's going to do the word December. And I decided that I wanted to do the word December in red, just as they had done. I don't know, it just seemed fitting. So I have gone ahead and threaded up that color. Now let's do our placement. have a little piece of double folded I had folded it over because it was kind of thin white here for the calendar piece now we'll track tack it down now we'll trim Now it's going to do the word December. If, like me, you end up with all these long tails, you'll want to stop and trim those out. After the word December, we're going to have a, just a line under the word. And I re-threaded my gold. It was already in the machine. Why not? Now we're going to do the number 25. Thread the color up you want to use for the large number in your sign. Now you'll want to thread up the color you're going to use for the satin edge on your sign. I used white fabric, so I'm going to go with white.
Step 22 are the holly leaves on the edges of the sign. The holly leaves are followed by the berries, so please thread up the color you're using for the berries. After we finish the sign, now we're going to do the paint bucket. We're starting with the large one. I've re-threaded the machine with the color I'm going to use for the satin edge of that. Let's do our placement. Trying to get around you here. Sorry about that. I had to grab different fabrics real fast when my original background it didn't fit. So my tabletop is just a little off. And, oh, well, whatever. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. I've got so many colors going on in this quilt. And after the tack down, we're going to trim this down. Next is the satin edge on the paint can. There's a paintbrush handle sticking out of the paint can. Thread up the color you want to use for your paintbrush. On the paint can, there's drips of paint coming down. They actually have it in stripes. So I'm going to use this maroon. And I was thinking about red. I don't know. I'll just, I might change my mind. But that's what we're going to work on now. The main color of the drips on this can.
as the maroon was stitching out, I decided it needed to go lighter, not brighter. So I went with a pale pink to go with the maroon. After the drips are finished, we're going to go to the glue jar and it's going to do a placement stitch for the top section. If you're going to change your thread, you might want to do that now. Now we will do the tack down. Now we'll want to trim. From the top section, we immediately jump down to the placement for the mid section, which is like the giant label is what I took it as, you know, it wraps around the whole thing, like on a mayonnaise jar. And I went ahead in the beginning and threaded it with the thread I'm going to use for the satin edge on that. So let's do our placement for the mid section. Well, bottom section. The other part of the glue jar. Now we're going to tack that down into place and then we will trim it. Why are you standing there? I'm sure you saw it thumping my whole my fabric was sticking to the needle that's because I had put a little bit of fabric glue on the back of that red and I got it in the seam line I need to be more careful about that the needle can go through it but it will leave a residue so I just need to clean that needle off that should do it Let's trim. Now that we've got that all trimmed out, it is going to do a satin stitch on that. Now it's going to do the rest of the satin stitch and if you want you could change the color that's the reason they broke it up
from there it's going to go to the lid on the jar and I'm going to you it has two different colors so that you know like the light is shining on the lid so it'd be a little bit lighter color back here than in front so it is broke up into two sections I'm going to use the same color for both Now it's going to do the front of the, the rim of that lid. I'm using the same color. The metallic threads that I was raving about in a previous video, so thrilled I had a silver. Yeah, it kind of went nuts after I used it a little bit. It was like the top layer of the threads were holding them on the spindle. They literally, it bounced, the silver bounced right off. A big, it just was a ball of thread. And I returned it. <laughs> So I found this polyester embroidery machine thread in Walmarts, and it is colored silver. It's a little shimmery looking, but it is not a metallic thread. And I'm going to use that for the star on the top of that jar. Let's see how that turned out. Well, I know you can't see it in the camera. I'm looking through the camera. It doesn't look, it looks like light gray. But in real life, it almost looks like it's a metallic thread. It's got a little shimmer to it. I do like that. Just enough. I mean, not as nice as uh, met silver metallic would be. And once I lay my hands on some, I'll use it again. So from the star, we're going to go to the back rim and the base of the glass jar. The back rim and the base of what? I was terribly confused about that because in my printout, it says, I, well, I made a list up, of course, back rim and base of glass jar. But when I'm looking at the printout, oh, I'm going to see if I can get it up under here. Okay, so do you see where these pencils and that paintbrush are? There are white stitch lines <laughs> that weren't showing up. So it was throwing me because I'm looking at that picture. Let me take the silver up and I'm going to put white on. And I'm going to do front, back, all of it in white. So, you can almost see, <laughs> that was the lines I was talking about. I couldn't see them on the paper when I was looking at the picture. Now it's going to stitch, there's pencils. Oop, I see a thread. Let's get that. I've had enough trouble with threads. There's pencils in here. And you know how when you sharpen it, you have a little bit of wood showing. There's the color on the sides and the color of the lead. But there's a tiny little bit of wood. That's what it's about to stitch. Now, as you saw, it is not a very dark brown, but I'm being lazy. Stop. Do you see what I just did? I'm supposed to be doing the first pencil. 
not the paintbrush. Oh my god, I'm losing my mind. So let's cut that. I'm going to skip a step. Duh. I've moved it back to the beginning of that. Well, I'll just use the maroon for the paintbrush handle. I actually have some maroon, maroon handled paintbrushes. Hmm. Or I won't. I'm going to use whatever color I want. Okay. All right, we're going to fix my boo boo. <laughs> so it's going to stitch out the first colored pencil. Since I had left my light brown in there, thinking, oh, it's going to the paintbrush, and it didn't, we're going to use an orange. That way, if any of it shows, it blends. After it did the first pencil, now we're going to do the paintbrush handle that I had messed up before, thinking it was next. So, I have threaded in a color to use for that. After the paintbrush handle, we'll do the second pencil in the jar. Now we're going to do the main color of a candy cane that's sitting right down there. After the main color of the candy cane, we're going to do stripes and an edge stitch. Now it jumps over to do the bristles on the paintbrush. Step 47 is the crimp, you know, the little silver, the little metal piece that holds the bristles in place on the paintbrush. Now we're going to do the rest of the edge of that glass jar. I put white back in. Over here, we have a paint can on its side. It'll be spilling paint on the tabletop. Now we're going to do the placement stitch for that. I'm going to leave the white in. I'm not going to worry about changing the color yet. I need to pull 
pull this out because I'm actually trying to get the leaf. <laughs> it's a really big leaf. I just thought, you know, that would just give it a little different look. Why not try using it? Now let's tack that down. And now we'll trim it out. Make sure you have threaded up the color that you want to use on the satin edge on this paint can. Now we'll be doing the placement stitch for the spilt paint from that. Now we'll do tack down. And this is our last trimming we'll do. Make sure you have the color of thread in that you want to use for the edge of your paint spill. From the paint spill, we're going to go back to the color we're using on the edge of the can so we can finish up that satin seam. Step 56, the last thing we do in stitching on this is the stars that are th strewn about on the tabletop. I went back to that silvery thread that I used for the star on the lid. And that's the last. Let's get it out of the hoop and get a better look at it. So this is my finished block. If I was going to do it again, I think I would probably use something paler 
or even white here and use something different for the sign. Um, I'm just not keen on the effect the gingham has. And I should, uh, if I ever make this block again, I'm just going to use the same color for the stripe and both because I don't know. It just throws my eye off looking at that. You notice how my angels are, I put them all on the wrong direction. <laughs> Oh well, the only this much is going to show anyways, <laughs> so it won't matter. At this point you can tell, but when it's all sewn together, you really don't get much of that. So, they probably won't even be able to tell it's angels. I did find, I've still got that little tiny piece I just keep trying to get more out of it. So I found a place I could use it. I had wanted purple there. And I was going to go with the dark purple, but I found this tiny little piece of the glitter purple left and squeezed it in. Thank you so much for joining me. I think I forgot to say it at the beginning. Oops. Sorry. I was so anxious to get it started. It takes me all day because it kills the battery and then I have to wait until my phone charges and takes a couple of hours by then you're eating dinner and yeah so I started this actually I guess I started it close to lunchtime and it is now seven o'clock at night so yeah it takes me a while <laughs> using my phone thank you very much for joining me I hope to see you next week bye bye